This is 52 Miniatures and I'm Alex. Welcome. The other day I was painting with my son at home and he asked me after a while, Dad, can you give me the red paint? I said, you know, you can grab the red paint yourself, it's right there. Uh, he, he said, which one's red? I said, you know, the one that says Carbra Blood Death Crimson on it. Uh, as it turns out, from his point of view, with the brand of paints that we've got at home and the, the style of the paint rack, you can't actually see the color of the paint inside the bottle. There's a label in the way that says what brand of paint it is and a strange name for the color inside. After giving my son the red paint, he said, Dad, why don't we just remove the labels on the bottles so that we can actually see what color paint is inside? And that was one of those moments when I realised, first off, that my son is a lot smarter than I, but also that in the honestly quite illogical grown-up world, we act by unspoken laws. Behaviours that make no sense in the grand scheme of things, but we keep on doing them, just because that's the way things are done. We paint miniatures, adding colour to grey plastic by the use of paint. The whole point of our paint is just that. There is colour in it. We like that. Sometimes it's difficult to choose the right colour. Sometimes we have a lot of bottles of almost the same colour. Sometimes we really, really want to buy a new colour. Still, the most important thing is to see the colour so that we can decide if it fits our idea and paint job. Yet, manufacturers of paint consider it more important that we can see their logo type and the name of the paint rather than what colour is inside of the bottle. It's kind of like putting a large sticker on your window of what brand glass they're made out of. Now you can't really see out of them, thus kind of messing with the idea of having windows in the first place. But you know, at least you're confident of what brand of glass is in the window. Admittedly, I'm biased. I enjoy looking at colours. It inspires me to come up with new colour schemes. Because of this, I put together a little notebook with all my paints, so that I can see what the paints actually look like in a dry state. Guy at Midwinter Minis asked me to share that tip, and you can learn more about it in the video linked up top. But I'm still slightly questioning why paint is not sold in clear, see-through bottles without a single word of text on at least one side. This seems like the most obvious thing, especially after seeing what my paints at home now look like without the labels. It's just so inspiring. There are, of course, practical issues. Like when explaining to someone else what paint I'm using, I can't say the third red bottle from the left. You would much rather prefer me saying blood, crimson, death, red. So I started to write the name of the paint on the bottom of the bottles. But then I thought, is it really that important? How many recipes of mine are you actually going to follow? Can't I just show you the colour and you can use whatever you've got that looks close enough? So I stopped writing the name of the paint on the underside. Most important for me is actually knowing the brand of paint. Because all paint act differently. They have different sheens, matte, satin or gloss. Some paints are thinner, others thicker and so on. Luckily, most paint brands have different colours and styles of cap. White for Vallejo model colour, grey for Vallejo game colour. That is unfortunately the same type of cap that goes on scale colours, fantasy and game colour, but luckily their bottles look different, and so on. But for whenever there was a need, I did write the type of paint on the bottle, like if it happened to contain an ink or a wash. Vallejo really do use an annoyingly tough glue to attach their labels, let me tell you. Now I know there are brands that use clearish labels on their paints, Games Workshop for instance. But there is something I'd like to say about text. Letters. Our brains are programmed to read text first. It's something we've taught our brain. The yellow on the warning sign might attract our attention, but it's the words warning, imminent, death that is the first thing our brain chooses to extract from the visual equation. 
Same goes for paint bottles. Not only will the letters on the bottle distract us from seeing the colour inside, the name of the paint might cloud our judgement. Like, can I only use the sandalwood for painting sandalwood, or would it actually be alright to use it as a Caucasian skin tone? Or is it okay to use the paints called leather to paint dark skin tones? Because the only time the company decided to use the word skin tone is when dealing with Caucasians. Having no text to distract consciously and subconsciously is surprisingly liberating. There are of course other solutions. I've seen paint racks where you can put the bottles in upside down. The only thing then showing is the bottom of the bottle. That never has a sticker on it. I do understand though, we like labels, we like brands. That's been programmed into us as well, like a pair of sneakers with three angled vertical lines, or a swoosh symbol are a lot more pleasing to wear than sneakers without. Mine have a cock on them. And we can collect lines of paint, I know I do, kind of proud of my collection. The paint has maybe turned into something more than just liquid with pigment in it used to paint miniatures. It's turned into a symbol of status or dedication. And I think that is why it was so liberating to rip the labels off. Kind of ripping away everything actually not important. Leaving me with only what is important, seeing the colour of the paint clearly. I have yet to tackle all the paint in the studio. There's a lot. I probably need to find someone who can do it for me. I have been thinking a lot about recipes and being able to say what paints I used on a paint job when asked, or when I need to buy a replacement bottle. And I'm considering writing the code of the paint on the bottle. Most brands have this, uh, 70.884 or SC51 on the back is a lot less distracting than a full-on label, at least. I realise this is not for everyone, our brains act differently. I get inspired by colours and less inspired by branding my home with company logos. I get inspired by the fact that my son has problem solved. He can now see the red paint and all the other colours too. And you know what? It's worth it just for the look of things. My little paint desk just looks nice now. And I can't wait to just sit down and paint. Thanks for watching. Bye. Thank you.